Good morning and welcome to the very first Ordinary Council meeting in our brand new chambers. Um, the time is 9am and uh, we'll commence with the acknowledgement of country. If I could refer to Councillor Kunzelman. While you do that, I'll just note the attendance here. From my left, we have Councillor Jacob Madsen, Councillor Sheila Island, the Deputy Mayor, Nicole Jonick, Councillor Paul Tully, Councillor Marnie Doyle, Councillor Andrew Fechner, Councillor Ross Milligan, and Councillor Kate Kunzelman. Ipswich City Council acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land on which we are gathered. Acknowledging our gratitude that we share this land today, but also acknowledging the cost of that sharing and our hope that we can move to a place of justice and partnership together. Thank you very much, Councillor Consumer. We'll now move on to the opening prayer. Councillor Doyle. Heavenly Father, we seek you to be with us in this meeting today. Assist us to be an example to others, bringing strength and encouragement in whatever we do and equip us for the ongoing challenges as they arise. Give the guidance to continue to make wise decisions for both the short and long-term benefit of our city and our community, regardless however difficult and unpopular some will be. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. We move on to apologies and leave of absence, and there are none. Go to condolences, there are none. Item six, tributes, there are none. Item seven, presentation of petitions. There are none. And just before we move on to item eight, um, I just want to, I think it's a very special morning. Not only is our very first council meeting, but whilst it's one of the coldest mornings I think we've had in Ipswich for a while, um, I think our hearts are all warm with the fact that Ipswich will be an Olympic city. Uh, last night it was said that the Brisbane, the 2032 games, uh, and we know that those games will be held without, throughout South East Queensland. Ipswich has been determined to have the modern pentathlon will be one of the events here, as well as some of the preliminary soccer matches as well. We're obviously also competing for other matches and other, other uh, events, but I think it's a really wonderful time for our city, and I think it's uh, very fitting in this, this new, um, I think, our new chambers here, but also have such wonderful news as well. Now I'll move on to item eight, which is the presentations and deputations. And we have a presentation from the students from Ipswich Girls Grammar in their Hack for Community Impact. So in May 2021, Ipswich Girls Grammar School hosted uh, the IGGS Hack for Community Impact, a hackathon to solve community challenges. Representatives of the winning teams from years seven to 10 will present their proposed solutions to problems relating to youth, safety and community in Ipswich. I invite the representative from IGGS to the lectern. Good morning, Mayor, councillors and members of the public. I'd like to begin by saying what a privilege it is to be speaking in front of you today. I can honestly say I'm sure we are all extremely thankful to be presented with this opportunity. However, I'm also sure a few of you are wondering how we got here. Well, two months ago, from the 21st to the 23rd of May, Ipswich Girls Grammar School participated in a hackathon. At this event, with the guidance of entrepreneur Ms Peter Ellis, we explored issues surrounding safety, the lack of youth volunteers and the lack of kindergartens and early education centres within the Ipswich community. We were given a total of approximately 16 hours to prepare our final pitches that had to address one of the aforementioned issues outlined earlier. This event was a great opportunity to learn problem solving techniques and develop our teamwork skills while working collaboratively. At the end of day three, we presented our final pitches to a board of judges and the three best pitch decks were chosen. These three pitches are what you'll be hearing today. Thank you, Mayor. Please ask you to state your name before you speak. Thank Hi, you. I'm Izzy and we are Agent Aid. Next slide, please. The problem we are addressing today is the voluntary work rates among youth. Throughout the Ipswich community, the amount of young people participating in voluntary work is extremely minimal. Although a survey we conducted revealed that 86% of 50 respondents would like to partake in voluntary work, but cannot. Furthermore, they said the main reason they could not partake was the struggle of finding accessible and available voluntary opportunities within our community. Next slide, please. 
Our solution to this problem is to create an app in which businesses and organisations can advertise voluntary work. From there, young people can view details and contact businesses in simple and effective actions to be involved in our community and expand their connections. Next slide, please. I'm Bridget. This problem is worth solving as use of the next generation and therefore are the hands dealing with future problems and issues in our world. We need to spread our connections throughout the community, which we can do most effectively through volunteering. The action of volunteering also increases the likelihood of finding employment, which is helpful to, do to those in Ipswich who are seeking work. Next slide, please. Furthermore, our app would provide direct contact with multiple organisations, allowing quick and effective connections. Results from the Affirmation Survey corroborates this statement by confirming that 92% of respondents would utilise our app, illustrating the current demand for an app such as this to be introduced into the market. Next slide, please. I'm Addie. Agent Aid's target market is the youth population, which ranges from the ages of 13 to 25. This is evident in the design and marketing strategy of our app, in which the layout is similar to pre-existing social media platforms such as Instagram. This will result in easy navigation and application by users. Furthermore, the design choice validates the solution, as, according to ABC News, teens average a total of seven hours per day on social media. Next slide, please. The target audience will be acquired through advertising on social media apps such as Snapchat, Pinterest, TikTok and Instagram. This is an effective method for advertising the company to the youth population for reasons detailed previously. Once customers download the app, they will be met with a sign-in screen in which they will enter details regarding their age, email, username and password. Next slide, please. I'm Denby. And our business model includes ad revenue and subscription policies. While the app will be free to download, companies wanting to advertise their volunteering programs will be required to pay a small subscription fee. Initially, a small amount of government funding may be required to jumpstart the project, as well as sponsors who would be advertising on our users' feed pages. Next slide, please. To get the application up and running, we would appreciate support from you, the Ipswich City Council. This assistance would include introductions to an app developer, allowing the prototype to become a reality, and exposure, which will assist in increasing publicity on social media platforms. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ruby. Safety, one of the most valued factors of today's society which plays a part in each and every one of our lives. Every iconic city, tourist destination or popular suburbs all maintain a high level of security and ensure that people are safe from harm and danger. And without safety, these idolised cities will most definitely collapse. So how come Ipswich still has over 9,000 crimes committed in 2021 alone? Good morning, I'm Ruby and today I'm here with my team to talk to you about making people in Ipswich feel safer and our innovative solution to solve this problem. Next slide, please. Although the current safety programs in place are very efficient, we feel the need to further address some of the concerns that are rising in our community. Based off our survey data, we've discovered that women tend to face more harassment compared to men, and majority of this harassment already occurs from males. This unjust problem is absolutely detrimental to our society and must be solved immediately. Our goal is to make those who feel safe and uncomfortable in Ipswich feel secure and content with the place that they live in. 70.7% .7 of people have experienced an unsafe moment in Ipswich over the past two years. We also asked if there was something that could have helped and most of the responses mentioned well-lit streets or more security. What we want to do is fix these flaws that exist in our community so that everyone can feel safe and secure with the suburb or city that they live in. Next slide, please. Our solution to this problem is simple, yet a effective method. We have created a simple safety app that consists of a panic button, an Ipswich survey, and a crime map. The panic button is an accessible icon on our app that when pressed will send, your police, will send the police your exact location or to the people who you need it to be sent to. It will be much faster and way more effective than calling police as it will be prioritised on the emergency helpline, as well as being easy to click and call instead of dialing. Next slide, please. The Ipswich survey option can be used for feedback and suggestions from the community for ways to improve our city 
and can be used for gaining different perspectives and opinions of the quality of safety in our community. The crime map is essentially a feature that allows you to find the safest routes and paths in Ipswich and can be used to report any incidents in the city. These features can be used by anyone in the community and will help them feel more secure and content with the place and their, the place they live in and their surroundings. Next slide, please. You may ask, well, why is this problem worth solving? Well, let me assure you that safety is something that affects the entire community, not just youths, not just adults, everyone. The quality, in, the quality of safety in our community is dropping at an alarming rate, and this situation needs to be attacked immediately. If we want to keep our city and our future generations safe from harm and danger, then we must improve our current systems and programs to ensure the future that we dream of is still within our reach. Next slide, please. We want our app to be something that people can rely on if they ever feel vulnerable or unsafe at any point in time. We know our app can be used by anyone regardless of their age, gender or religion, as we know that everyone deserves the right to feel safe and protected. If we can get the majority of Ipswich to download our app, we are certain that we can be one step closer to ensuring their safety and the ones around them. Next slide, please. We are Team ISC and we are solving the safety issue in Ipswich before it gets out of hand. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Amelia S. And the problem we are trying to solve is that 50% of children under the age of five do not attend kindergarten in Red Bank Plains. This percentage in Brisbane is 95%. Not attending kindy can affect basic skills that most kids normally learn at a young age. Next slide, please. I'm Amelia W. We created ILK and it stands for Ipswich Little Local Kindy. ILK is a pop-up kindy van that drives around collecting kids for kindergarten and then dropping them off at a local park for learning. There would be a therapy dog that would come every week for the kids to play with. We would use hands-on learning and provide food for the kids. Guardians could also have English lessons that would be provided through TAFE. Next slide three times, please. The reason why this problem is worth solving is because we need to get the percentage in Red Bank Plains up, looking more like Brisbane's percentage. This is to get more kids learning the basics before they go into primary school. In turn, this would take also a huge way of prep teachers' shoulders. Next slide, please. Our target market is the, kids, is the parents of kids aged 1 to 5 who need to attend kindy. We would also need the kids of the parents to enjoy ilk and convince their parents to attend again. Next slide, please. We will inquire customers by having posters hung up around playgrounds we plan to visit and posters in local shopping centres. When we see parents walking around with young children, we can give them business cards with times for when we plan to come to the playgrounds each week. Next slide, please. I spoke to Gerald over the phone from Red Bank Plains Community Centre. He told us why the kids were not attending kindy and confirmed our queries. He was very knowledgeable on the subject and told us information he knew. Some things he told us were information about parents and guardians not speaking well English and parents having family that they can send their children to instead of kindy. Next slide, please. Our key competition is other kindergartens around Red Rack Plains. Another problem is the activity of the parents and how much they will be determined to send their kids to an early education centre. Next slide, please. We are better than under other kindergartens as we have more facilities and more multicultural and inclusive than other kindies around the area. The parents will want to send their kids back to our kindy as they will love it and beg their parents to come back. Next slide, please. This is our team made up of Amelia S, Amelia W, Chelsea, Beth and Lizzie. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. And again, please. Sorry. No, again. And again, sorry. <laughs> you may also scan our QR code to see our website. Amelia and I have loved being able to come here and present for you today. We really appreciate you listening to us speak today on 
half of our team. Thank you. I now open the floor to the councils for any questions of any of the teams. Council Island, you got your microphone on? Microphone on? Microphone on? I'd like to congratulate the team that have done the um, preschool problems in Red Bank Plains. Um, Councillor Madsen and I are also following the same path, but um, we're trying to work through the library um, to try and get more. And we know that the schools down there are already starting to run pre-prep classes to try and get the children that don't speak English settled and uh, used to some discipline before they start school. So. I'm with you girls, thank you very much for bringing it up to, as for the general population to realise that we have a problem in Red Bank Plains. Just through you, man. Not a question, um, more of a comment and a congratulations to all the young ladies that came out to present to us this morning. I think that, um, you know, that lateral thinking you get from um, you know, diving into social problems is really important and it's good to see that there's young people in our community uh, that are identifying things that they can make a positive change towards. So I congratulate the school and I congratulate, congratulate the young ladies for coming out here today. Such a wonderful effort, such innovative ideas and I think that, um, you know, technology and, um, and access to it is really important and um, the app ideas were, um, were, were really great. So I hope that um, you know, these ideas can continue on and that we keep passionately pursuing them because I think there's some really great ideas and I echo the sentiments of uh, Councillor Island in that um, you know, you've identified a huge problem in Red Bank Plains. It's, um, it is a huge problem and it's one um, that we need to face head on and such a great creative solution easy, accessible. Um, so I hope that moving forward uh, we can throw our support behind you in any way um, that we absolutely can and I encourage you to keep pursuing these with not only us at Ipswich City Council but the state and federal members as well because I think there's real merit to these really great ideas um, and lots of the planning work has been done and uh, you know developing um, such awesome skills at taking surveys, identifying problems. I think, you know, um, I, I wasn't doing such amazing things at your age, so I can't wait to see um, these leaders of the future, um, you know, sitting in chairs like we are today, um, solving the problems of tomorrow. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fechner. May I ask, how did you go in identifying a problem? What was your process, if you have someone who's a spokesperson there? <clears throat> Um, we had a few people come in and they addressed, they like showed us a presentation and they um, showed us things that could be improved in mm -hmm. the community and then we got to choose one and build a solution around that. Excellent. I think Councillor Madsen was going to ask a question. Uh, it's not a, a question, but I'd just like to make some comments thanking you for presenting today. Um, I think there's some really creative solutions to some serious problems in our city. Um, I've got particular reverence for the local little kindy. Um, I think it's really inspiring to see young kids take up the challenge to advocate for those younger than them. Um, Education is a human right and it's probably the number one thing to make the world better. If people are more educated, they can make better decisions, they can be nicer to each other because they have a lot more security in their life from everything that flows from it. So, um, yeah, I'm really humbled to see such passionate advocacy for what I think is the number one problem. Um, it's not a government problem, like a lot of people treat it. It's a, it's a community problem. We have a responsibility for our neighbours. We have a responsibility for the people walking down the street to make sure that they have the best life that they can get. And, um, yeah, I'm really happy to hear your ideas today. Thank you. Thank you, Council Mads. I think <coughs> the Deputy Mayor... Has a question or a comment? Thank you, ladies. Um, your presentations were really compelling and, and genuine, and your solutions um, were brilliant as well. The the correlation from the early learning kindy to then teaching um, their caregivers English because they might come from a non English speaking background was brilliant. Can I ask who um, come up with that idea, or was it a group effort? A group ever. That's, that's amazing. Well done. And then um, trying to fill the gap in um, volunteer uh, through an app and getting the young people on board as well. Um, 
and and giving them a platform that they're already well versed in was is awesome too. So, um, yeah, well done. Congratulations. You should be very proud. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, Councillor Doyle. Uh, I have a question and a comment for the ladies. Um, quick question. Um, when any group of advocates come together, there's always a difference of opinion. We as a group of councillors absolutely know that and we, we debate issues all the time. I was just wondering if there are any um, differing points of view and, and how you may have problem solved that and, and come together as a group in decision making. No. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I wish we could all agree here <laughs> like that. Um, just a quick comment. I just concur absolutely with my fellow councillors' comments this morning. I just want to point out that um, I know an IGGS girl's values um, include respect and care, and, and that is why this school, uh, your school, has had a very long and successful history of you know, producing great leaders in the community. Whilst academic excellence and integrity are very, very important, um, the word emotional IQ is bandied around all the time and at the heart of emotional IQ is kindness, being able to get along with your fellow co-workers um, and then becoming a leader and, and just showing some kindness um, and compassion to your staff. So good job, ladies. Very, very proud that you're members of our community. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. Any other comments or questions? In closing, I just want to commend you all, um, ladies. Um, I think your, your hack on volunteering was um, spot on. Uh, we certainly see that um, in the community, um, when COVID hit, um, you know, the state government set up the, that care army and I think they had 30,000 um, people volunteer for that and over half were people under 30. So it's really great to see how do you harness, harness that. And also when we had our recent community development um, session with um, some of the volunteer groups, the number one issue was how do we harness uh, the volunteers of our youth. So thank you very much. Also a note, the, the hack on um, safety and community safety is really important. Uh, I think Ipswich City Council and Ipswich has a, a great record with that Safe City Camera Program. I did get grilled by a journalist yesterday who, who was telling me that we spend too much money on it, but I'll stand by the fact that community safety is really important, so I'm very keen to see how we can support and um, expand and make our community even safer. Thank you very much. And obviously, you've hit the nail on the head with the, the kindy um, issue that Councillor Island Council Madsen do raise on how do we lift up those participation rates in, in kindy. So moving forward, I'd like to so say thank you very much. I'd also like to thank um, the principal of IGGS, Dr Peter Britton, for also being here in the public gallery, and I can see some of the IGGS staff here, so thank you very much. We're very honoured to have you all here. And with that, I'd like to move that we, based on what we've seen today, that we refer um, these three hacks to our community culture and arts and sports committee for further discussion development on what we could do in that. And I will assume the chair of that committee, would you like to second that, Councillor Fickner? Yeah, I'll second that. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Any discussion on that motion? No, I'll put that to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. And it's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies. We'll now move on to item nine, which is public participation. And there is none. We we'll now move on to item 10, which is the declarations of interest in matters on the agenda. And I call if there are any declarations of interest on the agenda. Thank you. Uh, in accordance with section 150 EQ of the Local Government Act of 2009, I, Councillor Andrew Fechner, inform the meeting that I have a declarable conflict of interest um, in item number 14.6. The nature of the declarable conflict of interest is my business interests in both A1A Proprietary Limited and Bar Heisenberg Proprietary Limited, both located in the top of town in Ipswich. I plan on dealing with this declarable conflict by leaving the room while the matter is discussed and voted on. Thank you very much, Councillor Fickner. Do we have any other de declarations of interest? Councillor Madsen. In accordance with section 150 EQ of the Local Government Act 2009, I, Councillor Jacob Madsen, inform the meeting that I have a declarable conflict of interest in item 14.6, Ipswich Central Redevelopment Committee report. Um, 
The nature of the declarable conflict of interest is I'm a member of the executive of the Ipswich Trades Hall and Labor Day Committee, and our building, the Ipswich Trades Hall, is immediately adjacent to a lot of those Ipswich central redevelopment um, items. Um, I intend to deal with this conflict by leaving the meeting room while the matter is considered and voted on. Thank you and very much. I'd just Councilman. make a note that um, I declared a conflict for an item in last week's Growth Infrastructure and Waste Committee, but um, that's made under that committee has delegated powers, so I don't believe I need to do anything about that item because it's just to receive a note of the minutes Thank rather you. than endorsing the decisions made. I agree. Thank you, Councillor Madsen. Thank you very much to those two councils for their open declarations of, of interest. Uh, we now move on to item 11.1, um, which is the confirmation of the minutes of the ordinary council meeting that was held on the 24th of June 2021. Would anyone like to ask anyone a, count, a question on those? No, I see Councillor Lee with his hand up. Um, I'll ask for a, a mover of those minutes. Councillor Milligan, and a seconder. Do I have a seconder for those? Thank you, Councillor Fickner. Any discussion on those minutes? No, I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. And it's unanimous. Thank you. We now move on to item 11.2, which is the confirmation of the special meeting, which is the budget meeting on the 24th of June. And I'll move those. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Kunzelman. Is there any discussion or amendments for those minutes? No, I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. We now move on to item 12, which is the mayoral minute, and there is none. So we move on to item 13, which is business outstanding, including conduct matters and matters lying on the table to be dealt with. Um, and the matter that is outstanding um, for us Here's the matter that we had, I think, at the GIW in regards to inland rail. So this report was considered at the, tw the 24th of June Ordinary Council meeting and referred to today's meeting uh, to provide additional opportunity for Council to engage with key community representatives and Council officers engaged with the local community and the response received outlined support for Council's proposed submission to the Coordinator General. The community outlined that the proposed Council submission adequately addressed the concerns of the Grandchester uh, community. I'll, ask, I'll move this and ask for a second and then, then we'll go into discussion because I know Council Island, you asked for this to be moved to there. Do I have a seconder for that, Council Island? Thank you. I'll open up for discussion. Thank you, Mayor. I did um, put it on Facebook, our response, so that the general community through um, Grandchester and Calvert and Willowbank could have a, a look at um, what mm. we're proposing. And again, the main concern for them is the um, at-level crossing at Grandchester. Um, the number of trains that come through every half hour and the time it's going to take Spices is at the top of um, the Grandchester uh, Mount Mort Road and the number of um, vehicles that are going up there, it's increasing in popularity and they're building another um, recreational um, business. Uh, and so I'm with the residents that I don't think at level crossings, uh, that's the reports that are coming out across mm. Queensland, that at level crossings are dangerous and there's too many deaths. Um, but I accept that, um, that we can't change what's going to happen and I thank the officer who took the time to write the report and it was very um, encompassing of all the issues that have been raised so far. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Island. Obviously, the, um, this report is, is, I guess, Council's submission and we're representing the residents. Are you satisfied that the level crossing issue is, is covered off well enough in this report? They were all... Um, the feedback I got was that they think that we've addressed it, the okay. Council has addressed it adequately. They're not happy that they've probably still going to be stuck with at level crossings, but they're happy that we've put forward such strong arguments. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Do we have the dis that discussion? That was my question, so thank you. <laughs> thank you. Council Madsen? I'll just reiterate what Councillor Island said. Mm -hmm. um, there's a consistent um, stream of members of the public that notify us of the increased traffic mm -hmm. on Grantchester Mount Mort Road. Um, I'm quite sure that some of them have made those representations to Inland Rail themselves. Um, I'm just very hopeful that they are heard and listened to and 
There's a lot of public concern in Grantchester as well about the flood mapping that's been utilised because mm -hmm. we've seen photographs from locals that they have from the floods and they're a bit higher than the mapping that inland rails use. So I just, I hope that they listen on those two issues because the public's been pretty consistent about it um, and they haven't, they've been quite open and blunt from day one about it to be honest. So it's up to Inland Rail to react to the public comments and um, I look forward to them hopefully doing that. Thank you, Council Madsen. I guess um, we, we did some feedback and put a submission in recently for the, the Calvert to Kangaroo. So this is the, there's, there's two parts of this in our, in our LGA, uh, the Helena to Calvert. I think our views have been very consistent, that we're not happy with the number of level crossings and all the flood mapping. And there also con continues to be concern in our community about the noise attenuation. So I'm very, I'll be happy to support this, um, uh, this particular report as our submission for Inland Rail. Council Fechner. Um, just a question, we might need to defer to council officers mm -hmm. um, with regards to this, but are we expecting a detailed response from ARTC with regards to our submission? and addressing all of our concerns. Yeah. I'll call the relevant council officer to the lectern to, to show, tell us what the process is from here. Once we put the submission in, what's the process for the federal government? Richard Hancock, I'm the project manager for Inland Rail for um, Council. Uh, the answer is yes, we are expecting feedback from um, ARTC on all the points we've um, put in the submissions, um, and that's for the CTK um, EIS as well as the HTC EIS. Obviously they're large documents, so it's going to take the Office of the Coordinator General a while to um, put that feedback together, um, but we will get a response on all the points that we've submitted. Mm. And will, will that be able to be published to the, the public as well as the, the feedback? Uh, that I can't tell you. I'd have to check. Okay. If I could put that as a question on notice. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, just with, just with regards right. through you, Mayor, um, to that response. So the project keeps tracking. They continue to, you know, um, do their modelling and move forward with the project. Um, <clears throat> so I guess, uh, will, will they be treating these with a sense of urgency? Um, you know, because it could be seen that they're, you know, if they're continuing work on things that we've expressed concern on, they could be seen to be ignoring the views of our officers and, and the really um, great technical advice that um, we've given them in these documents as well. So just wondering what the timeline looks like. Are they forging ahead and they'll worry about the... the the comments later, or you know, it, are we in um, a, a, in the project timeline? Is there enough time for them to give that feedback and address that and, and amend as they go forward? Yeah. Um, while they are forging ahead, um, the EIS is on the critical path. They can't acquire land, and they can't start construction until they have um, EIS approval from the coordinator general. Um, so, it, that they have to resolve these issues um, with um, council. Um, before they can start construction. Thank you, Richard. A question um, on page 92. Oh, the first thing that struck me was the uh, carbon fuels and the mitigation of using... That's a microphone. Uh, on page um, 92, um, Mr Hancock, and thank you for this comprehensive report. Um, I'm just surprised, are you surprised, rather, this is my question, that they fail to adequately address the utilisation of lower carbon fuels? You would think that that would be fundamental to the project. Um, I think um, Council's made the point that it's not adequately addressed. Um, the EIS is written by a consultant um, from a desktop who won't be building the project in the future. So I think there, there are lots of issues that they um, would prefer to push um, further down the, the project delivery track. Um, and that's the kind of um, issue that they'll say, we'll do the best we can, but um, we don't think the commitment they made was strong enough. I think that's the point okay. of Council's comment. So is that consistent with the EIS for other sections of the mine, do you think? 
Um, certainly the um, Kangaroo was similar. Mm. Um, I haven't reviewed that for the for the other two projects in this this project delivery. Mm. Uh, but okay. it, they were written by the same consultant, so I would expect so. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Hancock. Thank you. I'll open up for any further discussion. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. Uh, I just um, have a quick <clears throat> comment. I just want to commend the uh, council officers and councillors Madsen and Ireland um, for their advocacy mm. on this really important issue for you know the whole of our city, but in particular their their residents. And as Councillor Fechner and I know, when when these tricky issues come up, it's really important that we step up um, as councillors and advocate for residents and, and help them articulate what their true concerns are. Um, in these situations, there will often be lots of objections being thrown around, but uh, some of the, the critical ones may get lost in, in all the white noise. So to dig down, and as Councillor Ireland said, you know, even take the, the draft submission back to residents to health check. Well done. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. I concur with your thoughts. I was going to make a comment that I want to thank Council Island and Council Madsen for attending the many community uh, consultative committees that are happening for, for both sections of the inland rail and for going out of your way, I know, consistently and, and taking many calls and seeing um, residents one-on-one -on -one, um, to make sure that their views um, are reflected in the submission that is before us today. Thank you very much. There's no other discussion. The recommendation is that Council endorse the document detailed attachment one of the, of the report by the consultant for the Inland Rail dated the 8th of July 2021, which will form the submission to the Coordinator General in response to the draft environmental impact statement for the Hillerdon to Calvert Inland project. I've already moved it and Council Island has second it. Um, I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. And it's unanimous and carried. Thank you. We now move on to item 14, which is the reception and consideration of committee reports. And the first of those is 14.1, the Growth and Infrastructure and uh, Waste Committee. And the recommendation is that minutes of this meeting, um, which does have full, full delegation, uh, that the Growth, Infrastructure and Waste Committee of 2021-06, uh, of the 8th of July 2021, uh, be noted. And I'm moving that items one through to nine are moved as a batch and noted as a batch. May I have a seconder to that? Thank you, Councillor Kunzelman. Any discussion? No, I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Thank you, it's unanimous and carried. We now move on to item number 14.2, which is the Governance and Transparency Committee. And the recommendation is that Council adopt the recommendations of the Governance and Transparency Committee report number 2021-06, of the 8th of July 2021, and I'll hand over to the chair of that committee for, for him to move it and any comments. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd just recommend that we adopt that recommendation as is. Um, we only had one matter on the agenda for that meeting, and um, that was a matter on the table regarding the Studiosity subscription renewal, um, and I think we'll go through that in the next governance and transparency meetings. So effectively, we didn't make a decision on anything at all. Um, so I'd recommend we uh, adopt the recommendation as is. Thank you very much, Councillor Madsen. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Milligan. I'll open up for discussion. There being no discussion, I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. That's unanimous and carried. Thank you. We now move on to item 14.3, which is that Council adopts the recommendations of the Community, Culture, Arts and Sports Committee Report number 2021-06 of the 8th of July 2021. There were six items in that. I'll hand over to the Chair of that to move and give any highlights or discussion. I would like to move that. Thank you, Mayor. Um, my recommendation would uh, be that we accept um, all of the recommendations made by our committee. I think that it's worth noting for the benefit um, of the group here today that we would be endorsing Friday the 13th of May as the Ipswich show holiday um, next year. Um, and that's probably um, the, the biggest standout from the committee. We had community funding and support allocations <clears throat> 
and an update um, with regards to the new arts officer role, um, who's already making inroads and doing a fantastic job. Um, with the indulgence of the group, I might just speak briefly yeah. to the success of the um, Spark Festival, uh, the Reimagined Ipswich Festival. Um, that was, over the course of the last couple of weeks, um, a truly extraordinary effort by um, Ipswich City Events. Um, I made it to almost every single Spark event over the course of the 11 days, um, and it was just ama an amazing way to see people interacting with our city. Um, it was, um, <clears throat> it saw thousands of people um, across um, lots of different age groups. There were specific events targeting different demographics and I thought that worked really well from live mu music for the 18 plus right down to the little day out celebration at Ripley Sunday Just Gone, which was an absolute hoot and uh, there were kids running wild and, and having a fantastic time. So I can't wait to see, um, you know, <clears throat> how we grow and build these events for next year, but I'm so proud to have been, um, you know, standing beside the Ipswich City events team, delivering such wonderful events uh, for our city. So congratulations um, to the team for their enormous effort, um, Spark Ipswich, and I can't wait to see what we do next year as well. So thank you. Here, um, Councillor Fickner. But uh, I'll move you to discussion later, I'll just... But yeah, so um, just moving to accept the recommendations of all of the items. One th thank you. Committee. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Kunzelman. <clears throat> I now open it up for discussion. I think Councillor I would like to make a comment. Thank you, Mayor. Councillor Madsen and I went out to Pea Crossing to the event out there. It was raining, the ground was wet and damp. It was booked out and the kids were outside doing all of their circus hula hoops and everything, but the inside show for parents was fully booked out and it was great to see the council had taken these events out out to the edges of Ipswich for um, our residents that don't come in all the time during school holidays. So again, to the events team, it was wonderful and the people were very, the residents were very uh, appreciative and um, there were some comments that we didn't advertise it far and wide out there and I uh, did say that, well, it was an Ipswich event, you know, we weren't going to advertise it a lot in Scenic Rim, but um, uh, it was well received. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Island. Councillor Kunzelman? Uh, similarly, Mayor, for the event at Rosewood, um, mm. which was packed out and much appreciated that we went to Rosewood mm. rather than Rosewood having to come to us. Um, and I can tell you that those clowns can tell you how to land <laughs> on the floor of the Rosewood Cultural Centre safely. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should have had it earlier, Councillor <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Madsen. I'll just um, add in on the reports. I went along to the little day out at Ripley Town yes. Centre on Sunday and um, just thousands of kids and parents, um, very successful. Um, council officers have done a great job in... Um, setting up that, that event. Um, I'm, I think it would be just natural to, to do it again. Um, a lot of happy families and that's what it's about. Thank you, Councillor Madsen. Uh, thank you for raising Spark. Um, yeah, I just want to apologise to the group. I should have moved outside of standing orders to, to speak to Spark, but I think that um, for it to have happened organically like this fine. is wonderful and thanks for the other councillors for their support of um, Spark Festival. Yeah, I think it's great. And um, the feedback and the, the number of the foot traffic we saw with Delight, you know, with the, the local artist's work being projected onto St Mary's, it was very lovely of the Catholic community to allow us to do that. Um, refraction along um, Bremer River was just fantastic. And, and I thank um, Riverlink for, you know, being a sponsor of that. And it was great to see people sitting on the terrace with their QR codes, ordering food, listening to the music. It was just uh, phenomenal, as well as Pixel on the admin building here. Um, I didn't go to all the events, Council Fechner, like yourself, <laughs> but um, I was out and about on the, the night they had the West of Waghorn. We had, what, 16 live music acts on, from between um, Waghorn and, and, and West Street, and um, um, we actually couldn't get a parking spot. We had to circle around three times, and I think that was fantastic to see that that was so busy that night. And certainly went to the best of the British. It was my husband and I, our, our, our 16 year anniversary. I can't think of a better way. It was a really fun, fun way to celebrate our anniversary. It was a lovely, lovely night. And it was great to see the fact that we had um, events in Goodna, in Rosewood, in, in Peak Crossing, in Ripley, and not just the, the CBD. I think it was really great to, to see. We made sure that was something in every division. So, any other discussion? 
No, I'll put um, item 14.3 to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Thank you, it's unanimous and carried. And now I move on to item 14.4. And is that recommendation is that Council adopt the recommendations of the Economic and Industry Development Committee report number 2021-06 of the 8th of July 2021. I'll hand over to the chair of that committee to see if they'd like to move both items together and if they would like to report any highlights. Uh, thank you. I would uh, like to move both items together. Um, I was absent and... Um, uh, Tally ported in via um, uh, uh, the link in the computer system. So um, my councillor Madsen did share that. Um, so I don't have anything to add and uh, would move it in a batch. Do you have anything to add? Yep. So that would be my recommendation. Thank you. Do I have that seconded? May I have a second? Thank you, Councillor Madsen. I'll open up for any discussion. There being no discussion, um, I'll move recommendation uh, 4.4. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Thank you. That's unanimous and carried. We'll now move on to item 14.5. And is that council adopt the recommendations of the Environment Sustainability Committee report number 2021-06 of the 8th of July 2021. And there are three items on that agenda. I'll hand over to the chair of that committee to see how he would like that moved and... Um, and any highlights? Thank you, Mayor. There were two items of uh, new business uh, at that committee meeting, uh, being the adoption of Ipswich City Council Environmental Offsets Policy and the review of Local Disaster Management Plan 2021. I uh, haven't been advised by any member of the committee that uh, there's anything they wanted to discuss in, in this forum, so I'll move that as a batch, both items, uh, together that uh, that be uh, accepted. Thank you. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Fickner. I'll now open it up for a discussion. Councillor Island. Um, thank you, Mayor. It's not actually part of the report, but I'd like to thank the officer who came out to the WAGS meeting to um, advise the members and all those present on how that's um, going to work from now on, how their uh, money from tea trees will be spent and how they can see it on the transparency hub. So I think um, I appreciate that he had to come out for a very long meeting, but um, thank you very much to um, the team for, for doing that. Thank you. I think we'll pass it on to Mr Smith. Thank you very much, Council Arms. I guess the only uh, real um, comment I have on this one is probably the item two, which is the um, environmental impacts, so the environmental offsets policy and the, the real need that we have in our city um, to be a more contemporary city. Uh, we're one of the few councils, I think, in South East Queensland that don't have an environmental offset policy. So it's really great to see us taking those steps, especially in regards to the new planning scheme that we're developing as well. If there's no other discussion, I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Thank you. It's unanimous and carried. I think we're up to item... The East Central Redevelopment Committee solves. Thank you, Council Madsen. Thank you, Council Fickner. Thank you. Just note that Councillor Fickner and Councillor Madsen have left the room. And we're up to item 14.6, which is the Ips which is that Council adopt the recommendations of the East Central Redevelopment Committee report number. Uh, 2021-06 of the 8th of July 2021. I'll hand over to the, the chair of that committee, um, Councillor Doyle, to see if she'd like to move uh, those items in batch or separately and any highlights. Uh, thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> yeah, I recommend that we um, move to accept uh, the recommendations in their entirety, noting um, that during committee we um, had two officers' reports, um, one which related to the Nicholas Street precinct, uh, the Retail Sub-Project Committee uh, update, as well as the um, Nicholas Street Precinct um, comms and engagement um, report. So I, I propose that we move them in, in their entirety. Um, just would like to um, make one small comment. Mm -hmm. in, in, in summary, during committee, we spoke to the fact that um, 
the two notable uh, events with regard to the CBD redevelopment being the opening of um, this administration building. Um, but what I see um, as a little bit more important than that, the, the children's library. Um, and, you know, um, there's been lots of um, publicity and, and uh, commentary around the opening of the children's library. And um, it has been a roaring success um, for those that were a little apprehensive about having a very separate bespoke children's library. Um, it's absolutely stood on its own and, and spoke for itself. And certainly um, that was the intention um, behind... Um, the administrator's decision uh, to create um, the dedicated children's library here, that it would activate this space and um, become a place of destination. And we've now got evidence that we're getting lots of visitors from outside the city. So that's fantastic um, for our business community as well. Thank you, Councillor Joel. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor William. I'll open it up for discussion and I guess I will concur with you, um, Councillor Doyle, the Ipswich Children's Library has been a phenomenal success, obviously just in the school holidays, but, but um, outside school holidays. Um, at the launch, we had um, library teams from other councils. I won't name where they are, but they certainly were so impressed and they're going back to their councils and asking if they can do the same. Um, it's a really great way forward, especially for a, for a city that has um, so many young people as well and so many young families. Thank you. Any other discussion? Nope. I'll then move 14.6. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous and carried. Thank you. I'll just wait for Councillor Fechner and Manson to come back in. Welcome back, Councillor Fickman and Councillor Madsen. We'll now move on to uh, item 15.1, which is the CEO's organisational performance report for June. And the recommendation is that the report be received and contents noted. So I'll move that. Do I have a seconder for that, Councillor Milligan? Thank you. I'll hand over to the CEO to uh, provide any highlights for us on Thank the report. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. And Councillors, I would just like to highlight uh, in particular the end of financial year result for Council, this being the organisational performance report for June. The position, position uh, financially has been fully assessed and is in detail in a later report on the agenda today, as you're aware. However, I would like to thank the organisation for all of their work to uh, deliver, ultimately, a, a deficit uh, which was significantly less than that which was forecast, so 2.3 million compared to a budgeted deficit of 6.3. So while we certainly want to support you as a council to move into a surplus position, uh, I thank, once again, the organisation for managing responsibly as we could in the circumstances to deliver that uh, end of year position. Also, of course, to highlight uh, the Infrastructure and Environment Department's performance in the month of June, uh, as our acting GM of that department had been indicating, they were very much ramping up uh, project delivery. So to deliver $16.6 million in capital works in the month of June uh, even exceeded their expectations of what, they'd, of what they projected. So um, they, they are indeed a very proud team and we've thanked them as well. And as once again uh, will be highlighted in months to come, uh, we're geared up to deliver, and uh, as we are well into July already, um, the delivery is continuing, not at that rate, but certainly at a, at a healthy rate in July, and uh, we intend that to continue each month of this financial year. Also just wanted to highlight our safety performance. While we did very unfortunately have two uh, incidents in the month of June, we're still tracking well below uh, averages, industry averages, and we continue to keep a strong focus on the safety and wellbeing of our workforce. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Acting CEO. 
I'll now open the matter up for any questions or discussion. Yep, Councillor Manson. I'll just make a comment. Uh, the item there listed under current significant matters, the council completed works on the Red Bank Plains Recreation Reserve. Uh, as you know, we were there yesterday, Mayor, with Councillor Ireland and the member for Bundamba, Lance McCallum, MP. Um, and the work done is just exceptional. Um, lots of kids and families there playing on the equipment. Um, it's just good, modern playground equipment. Um, and thanks to the state government for the funding that we secured to do that and the member for Bundamba for his advocacy mm. for the people of Red Bank Plains. I concur with you, Councillor Manson. Um, that was a $2 million project that was designed by Council as well, and as well as built it, and $1.8 million of that came from the State Government. So that's uh, um, very grateful for the advocacy of, of Lance McCallum, the member for Bundamba. No other comment? No? Thank you very much for this operational report, Acting CEO. I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous and carried. Thank you. We're moving over to item 15.2, provisional projects. And the recommendation is that Council review the provisional projects identified in attachment two of this report and determine which of these are to proceed to the next stage of project development. And just before we go into that, I think I'd just like to explain that this is, a, I guess, a new system. Um, when we were doing our budget deliberations um, last year, we found that, obviously, as we were putting money aside for our capital works budget, which obviously locks in projects for three years. And if we had just had smaller projects, like wanting to move a park bench or erect a fence or do something for community safety or look at a study or something like that, um, we really didn't have a lot of flexibility having a three-year capital works program. And we want to be very open and transparent in how we do that and how we respond to residents. So uh, we set aside half a million dollars for provisional projects. Um, the policy is, is up been online since December last year when that <coughs> policy was approved at, at Council. And this is the first time we're actually going through that list to say, hey, this is, these are things that we wish to add to that as well. So um, this will be the first time we're going through this and I'm looking forward to it. And I know that there's one amendment, I think, Councillor Island, you wanted to add one. So I'll, I'll add that as part of the recommendation. Yeah, that's, that's okay. So the list that we do have here, I mean, I think there's been an update um, in our page, but we basically have, um, for Division 1, the handball courts at Rex Hawks Park at Red Bank Plains. Council, and I'm going to move this as part of the motion um, to add for, undertake a master plan for the Cooneyanna Heritage Centre. But, so we'll ask a council officer on what they think that cost will be. Uh, Division 2 have, put a have asked for a smiley face sign on Red Bank Plains Road near Shiloh Church and uh, flashing um, light warning signs um, along this and also Britain Road's reserve upgrade to include a cricket pitch. Division 3 have put forward a Maculata Family Park Review for privacy measures and further park embellishments. Um, uh, Keith Pennell Park in North Bavel, park embellishments and lighting. Sealy Street, Silkstone, embellishments and lighting and then CBD Streetscape and Beautification Program. And Division 4 have put forward uh, beautification at the corner of Fitzgibbon and Down Streets, North Ipswich, to reflect the era. For example, a silhouette of steam train erected in this corner, leading down to the railway workshops. Another idea would be to paint a mural on the wall of old um, Ipswich House. So I know that some TMR land and state lands so will have to work through that. So I'll, I'll move that those projects are, are put forward. And if I can have a second, and then we can go into... Um, discussion. So I'll move that and Councillor Doyle has seconded it. And would each division like to speak to their, their projects at all? I'll start with Division 1. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you for adding the, um, the project to undertake a master plan for Cooneyanna Heritage Centre. It's been a long time. It's, everybody's been saying it's someone else's responsibility. So um, it will be good to be able to give them some certainty down there on, on what we're going to do or what they will have to do mm. to undertake their part of it as well. And um, for our um, handball courts, I guess we get... Um, do you want to speak to that one? Yeah. In regards to the handball courts, I'm aware that the um, comments there suggest that it's not in line with the DSS for a local park and would be considered an over-embellishment. Um, this idea for handball courts was put forward to me by a resident who um, takes his kid to the kids to the park pretty regularly, and um, there's just overcrowding. Um, 
there's a lot of people using the park. So I, you know, I don't claim to say that we should go against those recommendations for a local park, but if it's being used, I think that it's worth looking at. Thank you, Councillor Madsen. I note that obviously we have over 400 parks, so we have a certain standard and obviously it's, we need to um, look at each one individually. Thank you. I'll go to uh, Division 2 if you'd like to speak to the projects that you've um, put forward. Uh, yes, Mayor, I'll just uh, say a few words in relation to that. Um, and this comment relates to um, all three issues. One's mm. the uh, speed um, advisory sign uh, proposed on Redbank Plains Road near the uh, Shiloh Church at uh, Goodna. It, and, and the other two in relation to uh, flashing lights on the um, floodway on um, Jones Road at Belbird Park and also the Britain's uh, Road Reserve. I support each of those strongly. Um, and then it, 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 very negative comments on all three. There's no specific sub-program. Well, maybe there should be. Um, these are significant issues that have come up through the uh, community. Um, and even the feedback that, that I continue to get in relation to uh, speed, the speed advisory signs um, is very strong. Um, the the um, floodway on uh, Jones Road at uh, Bellbird Park near Catandra at Crescent, it was in uh, 2018, a woman was uh, trapped by rising uh, floodwaters and managed to uh, rescue her three uh, children, young young children, um, under the age of seven, I think all three of them, uh, single-handedly from the uh, floodway. Um, I think that's important to to have those flashing signs there, particularly um, at night where the flood water can come up very very quickly. The one in relation to Bris uh, Britain's Road Reserve uh, intrigues me. Um, again, this uh, mirrors the uh, comment that um, uh, Councillor Madsen uh, raised about. Um, uh, you know, classification of parks. But what concerns me the most is that it says, it should be noted that just north of the reserve in the Goodna is the Goodna Pony Club. Well, the Redbank Plains Cl uh, Pony Club, Redbank Plains Goodna Pony Club closed some 10 years ago mm -hmm. and hasn't used that uh, reserve at all. Um, and the community is, is asking for it to be embellished. And um, I, I've put this proposal forward for, for some time in fact, I um, saw an excellent example of that out on Moggle Road at uh, Moggle um, in the Brisbane City Council area where there's a white picket fence, a community cricket oval. And I think a community reserve there, because it's rather flat land naturally because it, w it was originally the Pony Club land, I think it's a really good area to bring that uh, community um, you know, together. Um, there's a, uh, a walkway through there already, a concrete walkway um, on the eastern side of Woolgaroo Creek to enable children and uh, others to get through to the um, Augusta State School. So I would really like to see that you developed as a, um, um, as a reserve. It's still a park and it would be used uh, informally as a uh, local community cricket oval. Just to add to that, Mayor, um, I've received a lot of um, feedback from the community of, about a lack of cricket fields um, in our division. So um, we have sporting fields and tennis courts and some basketball courts, but then um, cricket is lacking and it's, um, it's a very popular sport. Um, the, the field embellishments are... Um, seem to be easy to maintain and, and family friendly as well. So when they're not actually using them for sporting days, then, you know, they're open fields for picnicking and um, quite aesthetically pleasing. So, um, yeah, I fully support that provisional project as well. I, think I just want to note that the, the council officers are giving advice based on the, the I guess, the um, how we've structured our 400 parks. You know, we have the different categories of parks. So, I guess that's, that, that's their job to give that advice. Might I just check something with the acting CEO? In the right-hand column, it says currently underway. So is that all the, the costings and the workings for that? Yes, that's the, as I understand, it's the assessment of the cost. OK. May I, um, may I ask when we, will we have that? Because if we're making a decision, we, we need to know the, the cost. We'll need to ask Mr Madigan. So may I ask Mr Madigan to come to the lectern, please?
Sean Maddock, Acting General Manager of Infrastructure and Environment. Thank you very much. Mr Bailey, um, the three projects for, uh, for Division 2, when will we have some, some costings and some, um, I guess, some comments on that? Uh, we would expect to have those back um, at different times. So mm -hmm. the smiley face on Red Bank Plains Road, um, we should have that back within around about a week's time. Uh, mm -hmm. The remaining two, uh, a little bit more investigation, but certainly within the next couple of weeks we would have those done. So two weeks would be about the maximum time frame to have the, the costing the okay. whole of those. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Madigan. Um, sorry. Yep. Sorry, the other, sorry. Are there any other questions, Mr Madigan? Yeah, um, thank you. Just in relation to that third one, the um, Red Bank Plain, uh, Britain's Road Reserve, um, would you be able to come back to um, yeah, myself and Councillor Johnick, you know, so, so that if any costings are done, it's taking into account exactly uh, what we have in mind mm -hmm. uh, for that development. It's not just open-ended, it's for a specific uh, uh, purpose. And also um, raise with your staff the, the issue that the, uh, the Pony Club hasn't been there for 10 years. Yep, certainly. I, I don't know whether they're indicating there that that um, is the land still there that the Pony Club was on? Yep. And its designation is as a sports reserve, and what well, they're saying is... Well, it says that hmm. it, it should be noted that just north of the reserve is the Goodner Pony Club. Yeah, so all they've so, pointed out was that that particular land, as it's classified under our sporting um, reserve and park designation, would be suitable for a cricket field. They're just pointing that out as another option as well for a cricket facility in that particular division. Yeah, I, th I think yeah. the way it reads, they think it's still a pony, pony club land. Yeah. I just uh, through you, Mayor, um, and a question for Mr Madigan. Uh, do you envisage this list will grow beyond the $500,000 that we have allocated to the provisional projects? Um, it potentially will over the course of the year. Um, you know, everything's pretty uh, costly to do. Um, it adds up very quickly across yeah. a city of this size. Um, what we are looking at, however, is see a number of these um, particular types of projects do get raised by sporting clubs and the like direct to council over mm -hmm. the course of a year. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to say council, council as an organisation through a service request or through liaison with our sport and rec teams. Um, we're looking at putting in a governance process by which those projects that fit within um, you know, a DSS or, or the, the sort of council policies and infrastructure programs uh, can be added in over the course of the year. So um, there will be things in the capital program, um, like netting at sports fields and bits and pieces that arise in the course of the year. They're brought forward to the organisation direct from sporting clubs, um, as distinct from these ones that are being put forward by the divisional councillors following consultation with the sporting clubs. Th that is sort of the, the um, I suppose, area that this particular policy and these projects cover. There is then an, a separate process to be put in place where a sports club or a community group comes to us with a, an additional project and how that actually gets into our capital program and funded. Mm -hmm. um, that is a little bit of a gap in the uh, capital program build, but it's something we're working up on the moment and we'll bring it forward to council um, to ensure that we have proper governance around that yeah. In, yeah. in the coming months. So, so I, yeah, uh, thank you for the answer to that. And I think that um, it would probably be the will of the group, and I'll defer to any councillor who wishes to comment on this, that um, at least these projects are scoped. Um, if we can't afford uh, them in the provisional projects budget for this financial year, that at least the, the monies be allocated to scoping these projects in case we have grant opportunities come up and we have projects that are, you know, for lack of a better phrase, shovel ready to go so that we can put these forward and potentially get funding uh, for these projects as well. So just making it clear, that's my view, that if all of these projects um, are unable to be funded in the provisional projects, $500,000 allocation, um, that at least the planning is done for those and, uh, and a follow-up report comes back to the group um, so that we can clearly identify which projects will be funded this year and which projects will have to be deferred or, or looked at to, yep. to move to a different program if that is applicable. I think my question to, to Mr Madigan would be the fact that so far uh, this list is over 500,000, it's 513,000 and that doesn't include the exact cost for the treescape because I don't know how many trees. It doesn't include the Cuniana master plan or the projects for Division 2, so we're already over the, the half a mil. So I guess that's what we'll have to... Do you have any suggestions for that or, 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 or well, during sorry, discussion? We'll... I, I do have a question. What is the proposed start time for um, some of these projects? Um, 
my expectation, um, certainly when the provisional projects uh, category was uh, created many months ago, um, and it was why Councillor Fechter and I were very motivated to get the detail and submitted our projects back then. So it was my expectation that these would get underway very soon in the new financial year. So I'm not entirely satisfied that we're going to hit the pause button or be delayed in the commencement of some of these because there's been late projects added um, or questions raised. So was it always the intention, new financial year, we'd get some of these projects up and running? That's correct, yeah. Councillor. This is, this is why I put this report through to the Council meeting. Um, if we uh, get these projects signed off and commence to the next stage, then we can certainly deliver them this financial year in yep. accordance with the $500,000 budget. Yep. I think we'll have to have, have that in, in discussion. Yep. Any other questions of Mr Madigan? Thank you, Mr Madigan. We now move into uh, discussion for these projects. And I do note that, that some of the divisions have had projects sitting there, I think, since January or just end, end of last year, and we've had one just come through today. Um, at the moment, the, as I said, the budget we've already there was already another, the cost so far of five hundred thirteen thousand, and that doesn't include the treescaping, the Cooniana master plan, all the projects from Division Two. So I'm open to suggestions how we want to do this. Are there some that we wish to proceed with, um, and or are there some that we would go to scoping with, Councillor Dool? Um, I'd just like to point out we, uh, within Division 3, had four items. The fourth one was the CBD treescape and mm. beautification program. I'll just have to get Councillor Fechner's um, thoughts around um, whether he's in agreement. but I propose that that one um, be uh, excluded, okay. noting that um, just general beautification has occurred um, around the CBD, as it has across the whole of Ipswich. I note um, we had the information recently that our maintenance crews have had have a little bit more time on their hands now that it's winter and the grass isn't growing as quickly, so they're moving to some beautification and general tidying. So um, on that basis, I'd be happy to um, okay. exclude that item. Thank um, you. Uh, I think I was the seconder. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I moved it yeah. and Council Dole was the seconder. I'm, I'm happy for that to happen. So that's that, that treescaping. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and if I could just generally speak to um, the motivation for our other three projects, they are parks and note council officers' comments that, um, you know, they're embellishments and they may not necessarily be uh, in accordance with, you know, our, our park. Uh, structures. So firstly, I'd like to address Maculata Family Park in Riverview. Um, that suburb <clears throat> is very close to the heart of Councillor Fechner and I. We work very, very close with that community. Uh, that park is very tired. Uh, some of the uh, embellishments need work. Um, it has been explained to us that that park is a safe place for many of the children living around there. When there's uh, domestic violence, um, issues going on in the home. It is the place that the children can escape to. Um, and uh, in addition to that, um, we had a mother speak to us very passionately that um, she has limited resources as a single mother and therefore can't take uh, the children out for dinner or to the movies. Their outing is to use the barbecues, have a sausage sizzle and play in the park. Um, feel very passionate um, about that one. We're not asking for much, just a little bit of TLC and additional embellishments, for example, a set of monkey bars. There is mention of some trees. Um, I, I'm of the view that um, 85,000 uh, is excessive and it, it won't um, need that amount of money uh, spent on, um, on the trees. Um, there is a particular resident that, that has privacy issues and very valid privacy issues. Um, a whole line of trees died, um, exposing his house to people in the park. So um, he'd just like to see some trees planted so they can begin to mature. We don't necessarily need um, completely mature plants going there. So I think we might save some money. The other two parks, uh, North Beval and Silkstone, um, again, the motivation behind that, safety issues. Um, the key um, request there was for lighting. Both parks are used 
um, regularly by community members. Um, and just in relation to Sealy Street, I want to touch on Councillor um, Jonick's comment around the uh, cricket nets. Um, Ipswich um, community, we are mad, passionate cricket um, families. There's, there's lots of us, mine included. And on any given day, families can go searching for nets to train their kids in. Dads regularly take the kids to the park. Um, and sometimes those nets that are already there in our parks are subject to exclusive use agreements with cricket organisations, and they might be locked up. We need more public cricket nets, um, something I'd like to explore. Uh, specific requests came from residents in, in Sealy Street, so um, maybe the cricket nets you know, need to be parked while we explore that as a long-term uh, solution. But that's a summary of why our projects were put forward. Thank, Thank you. you. Councillor Lord, Councillor Fitton, I just look at the um, the three projects there and obviously um, Maculata, which I know you're very passionate about, um, those 10 trees were costing $85,000, but the embellishments is 150. Those three parks there, they, they, the, the, um, the proposed cost is 150000 for each one of them, so that's 450000 So I guess I'll go to you asking, would you be able to prioritise um, well, Mayor, I would actually um, propose that the lighting be prioritised mm -hmm. um, for those two parks, being North Beval and, and Silkstone. That's $100,000 okay. in total there. Yes. Um, embellishments can come later as we start to discuss, you know, the rules and governance around that. Um, uh, Maculata Park, um, like I said, the... $150,000 for embellishments and $85,000 for the trees. I think that's excessive. Um, and certainly the embellishments. Um, the information I've given to council officers when they requested that the types of embellishments... Um, well, yeah, I, I, I can't really comment. Um, uh, but, yeah, propose that in relation to the uh, North Beval and Silkstone, certainly, just the lighting be made a priority which is about $110,000. Um, and then Maculata Park. Um, I there's guess not, we... there's not a high level of specificity here. Um, and probably speaking to Councillor Tully's comments, um, we, we would like to be consulted um, before any okay. further scoping works are done on these projects. So potentially on a divisional basis, uh, we meet with the General Manager of Infrastructure and Environment um, to really dive down into the detail um, of this um, to really, uh, so, so that the views of the community are really captured, um, you know, in, in the projects that actually get up and, and across the line. And I thank Councillor Doyle for her comments. These are three well-used parks in our division, um, you know, as evidenced by, you know, us going out and visiting these residents um, and, you know, particularly Maculata Park is some, it has had issues that need mm. to be resolved. Um, you know, and and we're prepared to work with IED um, to to get this over the line. So maybe you know it's difficult when these high level costs uh, are here in front of us, and I get that yeah. um, it's difficult to speak to um, the detail of the projects. But I think that it's definitely worthwhile that we, as the divisional councillors, are consulted with um, just to give it a health check to see if. Um, the ideas and thoughts of our community are truly represented in the projects um, that end up coming to light. Uh, so, might propose an amendment that. Well, um, if I. <clears throat> I was going to make a suggestion because obviously part of this provisional project, for my council Fickner, um, is to get this done this financial year. So, I'm, I'm thinking there might be some things that we could say. Um, yes, please proceed, and there'll be some things mm. we'll say, well, let's come back next month after some discussion. So at this stage, I'm looking at that, that 46000 for the, the handball courts um, at um, Rick's Hawks Park. Um, I guess we need to decide, Maculata, it's looking like each tree is costing 8500 I think we're, I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> I'm happy to purchase the trees, now yeah, and install them. Um, so I guess I'm open to you what you would like to do, the way you would have put a dollar amount there, uh, Council Dollar, Council Fechner. But um, obviously... Okay. Um, you know, let's um, park <laughs> the tree issue to the side for the moment, and that's something can, that can happen, 
going forward because we absolutely need to investigate. I'm not sure council officers um, were on the same page as to the size okay. and type of trees. So okay. if we're prepared to park that one, then it would be the $150,000 towards embellishments. So you're saying that you'd like the 150000 Yes. Towards em embellishments? Uh, we're looking just the lighting for but the... But so, sorry, through you, Mayor, um, open for discussion and debate. If somebody else has put forward a project... Yes. ..and they, they've been scoped and, and they've done the work and it's ready to go, happy to have the debate, what, yep. what's the priority? Sure. Uh, what I would like to do is just sort of flesh out what that would be, what, we, what, what would potentially be changing this, um, this um, recommendation to be. So if it's 150,000 for Maculata Family Park, uh, 33,000 for Keith Pennell Park for the lighting, and noting that you'll do additional work um, on that embellishment. For Sealy Street, 77,000 for the lighting, that, that pathway there. Um, the beautification on the corner of Fitzgibbon and Down Street, there's a 17,000 for that. I'll just add that up quickly to see what that is. That's a total of 323,000. So based on the discussion we've got here today, I'd like to um, propose an um, amendment to the recommendation is that, um, that the provisional projects that we approve, uh, the 46,000 for the Hamble Courts at Rex Hawks Park, 150,000 for the Maculata Family Park, 33,000 for the Keith Pennell Park, for the lighting, 77,000 for the Sealy Street Park there for, for lighting, 17,000 for the beautification on the corner, and that's a total of 323,000. Knowing that we still have um, then, you know, 180, $70,000 to look at how that would be spent on uh, Division 2 projects as they come through, uh, also at the, for the Cooneyanna um, Master Plan. Um, I'll, I'll move that as, as an amendment, and, Can I just, and um, I'll just I'll just I'll just move that as an amendment um, as the as the mover um, as the seconder, um, council door. I'm just moving that. I'll open that for discussion. So I don't agree um, with that um, mm. calculation because. Yep. Um, there was comments made about um, other councillors putting the work in um, on a scheduled time frame. This was a new system um, that we were all um, basically practising in that um, feedback was missed um, for certain divisions and I don't see why my community should be uh, penalised for that and half of the um, budget be going to one division in particular. Thank you, Councillor John. Councillor Manson. Yeah, I'd just like to um, address the things. Councillor and Ireland and I put forward a lot more projects, but mm -hmm. um, they were knocked out as not provisional because they were under different programs. Um, particular things like a connection across the creek, connecting um, Hallett's Road through to... Um, Greenwood Village, um, yeah, up to Rice Road, so a footpath connection, that was knocked back because it wasn't in ATAP. And anyway, so it it's, it's not going to be funded through that ATAP program for some time, but it's not provisional. So we put forward projects, a heap of them were knocked back. Um, what we have here, um, I'd, I'd actually appreciate having a bit more consultation, a bit more work done on what the specific costings are. Um, I know that it seems to cost government more money to do things. I was daydreaming the other night. Um, I've moved into a property where um, I have enough space to potentially <coughs> build my own basketball court. That's a dream that I have. Um, and some of the costings I was looking at online, like I, it's, <laughs> it, would, it would be like 90000 to build my own concrete basketball court with hoops and screens and stuff. And it's going to cost us 46000 for handball courts. I need more detailed costings before I am willing to commit to any sort of budget expenditure today. 
Mm -hmm. um, I just think that we've got to dot I's and cross T's. Um, that's what the public want us to do. Um, and in, in, in regard to some of these other projects, I would, I would say that um, Councillor Jonick and Councillor Tully, this um, administration building isn't the most convenient place for them to do their work as representatives of the eastern suburbs of Ipswich. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real thing. Their availability to talk with officers isn't as strong as other divisions. So I'd, I would very much like to see their projects be assessed before we make any citywide strategic decisions on this matter. Mm. Uh, to you, Mayor, and as the chair of this meeting, you cut me off when I was trying to make an amendment earlier. That probably would have solved this issue. So okay. I will Please go proceed. back to moving that amendment. Um, if you'd let me make that amendment this time. So I'm proposing that we move an amendment um, and speaking to Councillor Tully's point earlier, that the divisional councillors be consulted by the Infrastructure and Environment Department manager by, load, by no later than 31 July to talk about the specific scoping of the projects um, that we have put forward uh, for the provisional project listing. May I ask Councillor if you could have the, that the councils and the mayor are consulted? Yep. The council effect has moved that. Do we have a? I oh, know it just needs to be uh, if the first, if the if we're both mover and the seconder agree. I'm okay with that. Councillor Doyle? Councillor Doyle? I agree with that. Now, our tech isn't all up to 100% yet because we moved in this building three months early, so I'm going to have to squint to ask Vicky to show me her screen to read out that. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Could that so the variation is that division councils and the mayor be consulted by the LAD manager by no later than the 31st of July to discuss the specific scoping of projects put forward for the provisional project listing. Um, as the mover, I've accepted that, and, and Councillor Doyle, as the seconder, has agreed to that. Is there any other discussion on this particular...? I'd just like to make the comment, Mayor, that um, within government, all levels, um, things do tend to happen slowly. Uh, this provisional project uh, item um, was an opportunity um, for us as councillors uh, to get these projects underway far sooner than they would being on the three-year capital works project. So um, I implore my fellow councillors to um, make um, this particular work a priority over the next four weeks so we can get the projects underway. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. Any other discussion? No? Oh, Councillor Milligan? Thank you, Mayor. If uh, I may, I'll just uh, speak to uh, Division 4's uh, input to uh, provisional projects, that being that uh, Councillor Kunzman and I also had a, an extensive list uh, that we took to IED and uh, in consultation uh, with the management there, uh, it was identified that all but one would fall uh, into other sub-programs, as other councillors have, have experienced, uh, of course. I understand uh, with uh, good governance that is how that uh, should be managed and, and handled and, and accept that uh, uh, some of the particularly larger items, that's where they belong. Um, with respect to uh, some of those items, uh, one example is uh, ball catch nets at Anzac Park at uh, Rosewood. Uh, but uh, due to the, uh, the diligence and good work of uh, the operational uh, side of council that uh, has already been uh, underway and, and is almost completed or coming up to completion. With respect to the one, so that left us with one item left which was uh, brought to Council Kunzman and myself by a community member who owns and operates a, a business at that uh, intersection of Down Street and Fitzgibbon Street, uh, North Ipswich. Uh, she's um, actually located on the northwest corner and uh, has interacted with her, her neighbours and, and other locals 
um, viewing that North Ips, which is a, a particularly a, a, a precinct of its own, um, we would all be aware that along um, Down Street itself there are business premises along there, and that uh, heading in the outbound direction from the CBD uh, that Fitzgibbon may be a uh, uh, is utilised by uh, people as the entry point to the Railway Workshops Museum, and uh, she requested that uh, we highlight some of uh, our city's history uh, with a proposal there. Uh, two or three items that she, she had raised was the um, place, placement of a uh, similar um, erection that uh, is also around the, the other areas, uh, being uh, the silhouette of a steam train. Um, she also alluded to um, maybe a, a bicycle, uh, alluding to the, locali the future locality of the Brassel Bikeway there and also highlighted that across the road on the northeastern corner is uh, a building that still has it uh, listed on, on the gable as Ipswich House. Uh, she informed me that that was the first uh, movie theatre uh, in Ipswich. Uh, others uh, would probably know the location as being the operation of a cafe uh, operated by one Jimmy Wah, uh, of which uh, many Ipswich locals would, would know and may have been customer thereof, and that the uh, building is uh, and the property is still in the family. Uh, and it was identified that uh, maybe placing a mural on that building due to it being private property uh, is not something that council could undertake, but I'm sure that we could have that discussion with the property owner uh, if they so choose. So uh, the, the scoping that came through, um, high level costing for that project, uh, which is the only one for Division 4, come in at 17,000, which is a very, very small percentage of the 500,000. Um, that's uh, where, uh, as a division, we have landed. Uh, Councillor Kunzman and I are absolutely acceptable to the the, the fact that uh, all, all our others were um, covered by other sub-programs. Thank you, Councillor Mulligan. There's no other discussion. I'll put the variation to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous and carried. Thank you very much. I think probably one thing I've learnt from this, maybe we need to workshop the um, provisional project before it comes to council. That's something we can discuss later. Um, 15.3 is the monthly financial performance report. And that recommendation is that the report on council's financial performance for the period ending the 30th of June 2021 uh, submitted in accordance with Section 204 of the Local Government Regulation 2012 be considered and noted uh, by Council. I will move that. Do I have a seconder for that report? Thank you, Councillor Fickner. Would everyone uh, ask the relevant Council officer to the lectern, please? Councillor Steph Keach, Chief Financial Officer. Just succinctly, let's see if, um, if you could just give us a, uh, uh, the highlights of the, I guess, the end of the financial year. Yeah. Sure, thank you, Meg. Um, as mentioned before by, by the Acting CEO, um, when we're looking at our final result, if, we, if you remember through the year, we um, incurred some costs associated with refinancing in the ICP loan, which was about uh, $4 million worth of interest. If we exclude that, out of our operating position as a sort of one-off, we're at a deficit of $2.3 million compared to what would have been the budget at 6.4. Overall, that gives us an operating deficit if we include that interest charge of uh, $6.3 million compared to a, a, a deficit forecast of 10.5. So that's very positive in that space. Um, what I would note for, for, for yourselves would be a lot of the driver behind that additional um, uh, better position in terms of the deficit was in relation to additional revenue you would note in the report that there's additional uh, fees and charges revenue and also some other revenues received, as well as um, uh, an underspend in relation to our materials and services of about a million dollars. Highlighting a, a couple of key points, obviously, um, if I just run through quickly some of the expenditure items, um, our wages it, it was about $600,000, $700,000 over budget, primarily driven by a note in there around some termination costs associated with some restructures going through the organisation. Uh, that went through in June. Uh, so excluding those, we would have been um, under our amended budget that was, was put through for by Council in February. And um, when we're looking at our materials and services, as we discussed at the last Council meeting, Council has incurred some significant legal costs associated with our planning and environment court matters 
over the last couple of months. So um, whilst we're still under on materials and services, we have actually um, covered off through that an additional $1.8 million uh, worth of legal costs in the current financial year. And I would point and note to that 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 was obviously a carry for, carrying forward risk for Council as we get into the new financial year as those, as those costs and those cases continue through. Um, so that's really where we ended up in terms of that. Our rates revenue is very close to on budget. Our growth numbers uh, were pretty well in line with our forecast that we made at last time from there, which has obviously been reduced a little bit um, as a result of COVID impacts over the last 18 months. Um, I guess just picking up, Mayor, if you'd like, on, on the capital side. Um, the comment was made before also in relation to our YED, which is primarily our largest capital budget area, um, had a significant spend in the month of, of June and, and ended up slightly over budget um, overall in terms of their dollars spent. Um, we are under in relation to our capital uh, expenditure by, uh, by around about $19 million, but as the Mayor and Council is aware, we've had some uh, delays in relation to the retail space on the CBD, and that's primarily what's driving that. So um, as we go forward with the discussions uh, in relation to the CBD development on the, on the retail space, um, we've obviously got money in the current budget for that, and if further money is required during the year, we've got some carryover associated with that there. Um, so they're probably the major highlights, uh, Mayor and, and councillors, and if they're happy to take any questions or discuss it in any further detail. Um, yes, uh, Mr Keach, um, I note with the depreciation, um, yes. it's, it's higher than, than budgeted, the $1.9 I note yes. part of that is playground equipment. Is that because we receive parks from developers... Um, Yes, so we over embellished, and so that's now an expense on our on us. Yeah, whether they're over embellished or not, I'd have to look into the detail. Mm. I guess one of the questions, but that can be the cause of it. Absolutely, we, if you did notice, our donated assets was significantly over budget by about thirty million dollars. So we mm. had budgeted around about the sort of seventy odd, and we've come in at about a hundred million. That's great. We've we've got more assets in that space. But you're right; that does incur additional depreciation yeah. and maintenance costs as we move forward. In relation to that, sometimes that is just offsetting the fact that we otherwise would have received cash contributions for the developers are now uh, developing those assets instead of what would have otherwise been contributions required to council to build those assets ourselves in accordance with our um, infrastructure plans. Uh, but yes, depreciation has also been driven by that, but we've also started to bring on, um, and it will continue to rise just for the committee and council's perspective, you know, as we bring on the, the Tolma Place and, and the new libraries and the new administration buildings, they will increase our depreciation expenses as we go forward um, in those areas. So there was bringing on some of those additional assets that did increase depreciation. And also, if you remember, during the year, go back 12 months ago, we had some revaluations of some yeah. of our other assets, which, um, which resulted in higher depreciation coming through this year because of the revaluation this time last year. Yeah, right. Thank you. Councillor Fickner. Um, just a question about donated assets and... Yep. Yeah. Quite a complex question there to, <laughs> to respond to, so I'll make some, some general comments if that's okay, Councillor Fechner. Um, the contributions, and, and the planning officers may correct me if I'm, I'm slightly wrong, uh, the contributions that we receive and the assets we receive are primarily for the construction of the asset or for the asset itself. So Council will either receive um, cash contributions for us to have an obligation to complete the infrastructure under our local government infrastructure plan or we'll receive the donated assets for what would be often, say, the infill, the, the, not the trunk infrastructure, but the normal infill, you know, roads and parks as part of a, a development. They are just the construction costs of the assets. We don't receive contributions for the ongoing maintenance from the developers in that space, and that's not part of the calculation of the developer contribution. What I would say, and that's funded from, is I guess when you have the development, you have additional rates and revenue and growth. So the idea of the maintenance and the ongoing, that those would be aimed to be funded by the additional rates revenue that is generated by having that additional additional growth in that space. But the obligation to replace those and to maintain those comes over to Council um, and is not sort of as part of the infrastructure calculations under the maximum allowable charges for developers. Okay, so the yeah, collection of, of the rates, um, do you see that um, 
you know, that, that is actually paying to maintain those, those assets moving forward. And I, and I know that this isn't an issue that's specific to Ipswich. No. I know that it's a, a local government issue, but, you know, this, the urban sprawl that exists, hmm. the, the, um, the immediate covering, um, you know, of the costs, um, you know, associated with current yeah. rehabilitation needs by rates in newer areas that don't necessarily need rehabilitation. Um, you know, Ipswich is a very fast-growing uh, yes. place, so this is not really a concern uh, for a council of today, but particularly moving forward into the future, how do we start to mitigate some of these risks when development starts to slow down, we're not taking on as many, you know, ratepayers yep. in, in the ratepayer base, how do we then afford, you know, in the long-term financial forecast to sustain the city and its assets? Yep. The key part of that, I would say, is our, is our forward planning and modelling. Um, so that's the alignment and the key alignments between our asset management planning and what that's telling us and when we need to intervene. But you're absolutely correct. In the early days, we will receive the revenue, but often the maintenance costs and the replacement don't come until 15, 20, 50 years later in that space. So a key part of it is our forward forecasting and modelling and making sure that as we start to um, model our sustainabilities and, and look at those pressures, that we set the appropriate rates revenue and manage our costs associated with those in the, in the long term. So it is an ongoing pressure that local government face. Um, we are a, primarily an infrastructure heavy organisation and that's, that's local government in, in one of our key areas, which is why we have key requirements around our um, asset sustainabilities and um, looking at our asset management planning and building all that into our forecast so you can make informed decisions now around what levels of revenues um, are required to maintain those assets going forward for both the community now but also the community in the future. But it is a, it is a pressure that, that we will face more and more as some of those assets become older and we then have to look at how do we replace and sustain those. And you bring into play all the aspects around um, you know, funding of your debt levels and, your, and driving surpluses. So one of the key things for us as a discussion that we've had through the budget process is yes, we're running some small deficits now but the key focus for us is to move into a surplus position so you can start to manage some of those, um, manage some of those pressures as they come on forward in the future. Um, I know it's very hard to do specifically, but it's quite a complex no, question in managing. Is, yeah. But it is an ongoing pressure for councils to face as they bring that significant infrastructure on board and the obligations transfer over to council. Yeah, and thanks for your commentary around it. I think it's really important for us to think about financial sustainability and security for the future of our city, you know, particularly thinking about the growth out Ripley Way and, yep. you know, and the implementation of a new planning scheme. I think it's important to incentivise the right kind of development um, and at the right pace. Just because yep. the state government told us that our population is going to double within X amount of years doesn't mean that that's necessarily a target that we need to be aspiring to here. I think Think that we do yep. need to just take a deep breath and think about our financial sustainability and think yep. about sustainable development and you know how the city grows around that. I mean, like I said earlier, it's n it's not going to affect us in our lifetime probably because of the projected growth mm -hmm. and and you know that artificially or or not or covering the costs of, of rehabilitation of Correct. current assets. But, you know, in 20 and 30 years' time, um, we, 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 need to, we need to set ourselves up. So surplus position um, yep. is important, and we can't just keep expecting the ratepayers to, you know, you know a 25 two, two 15% rate increase um, just to cover the bad mistakes of our financial planning. So it's something yep. that I'm, you know, particularly concerned about and something that it's the front of my mind. And thank yep. you for your comments around that. I think it's a really good education piece to be aware of um, coming into the new financial year. Yeah, absolutely. And just a, a final comment on that, I, and, and one that which was discussed heavily by yourselves through the budget process and reiterate is you, make, you don't look at one year in isolation. You know, mm -hmm. budgets in council are often looking at one year ahead, that whole idea of long-term forecasting and forwarding. So that, that requirement for us to adopt the 10-year forecast and in your discussions that you had and, and appreciate the input of yourselves through the budget process where you did consider and we presented through to you not only the decisions that you make now, but what are the implications of those decisions in our modelling for the next 10 years. So I would continue to, to support you in wanting to make sure that that's as part of our discussions. We just don't look at decisions in isolation for one year now. And when we start to make decisions on investment, we look at what we refer to as a whole of life cost, not just the capital cost of constructing something, what is the whole of life of maintaining that and replacing that. 
And if those sorts of things are coming forward to you in discussions and business cases, then my view would be you're on the right foot to make sure you're managing a sustainable organisation. But you're absolutely correct. Growth is a great thing, but it's also a matter that you need to be very conscious of is how do you manage growth um, going forward over the long term. Thank you, Mr Hitch. Are there any other questions of the CFO? No, thank you very much, Mr Hitch. Thank you very much. I'll open this item up for discussion. I'd just like to note to you, Acting CEO, just the note here that the ICT expenditure was $2 million lower than budget due to reduced expenditure required for one Nicholas Street through repurposing equipment and reductions across the other projects. I want to pass on my thanks for that. And to the CIO, who's in the public gallery, thank you for the repurposing um, of that, you know, for cost, but environmental reasons as well. Any other discussion, Council Island? Um, Mayor, I've already put a request in through the CEO that um, at the end of, um, well, in September, that we get some graphs on how we're going to fund the Ripley Valley um, work that has to be mm -hmm. done. Um, I guess uh, I disagree with the councillor that um, we have to look at perhaps not more lots because we need more lots to be able to fund all the work that we've got to do. So I will be looking forward to seeing lots created out through Ripley Valley and further west as it goes so that we can fund all our debt. Mm. Thank you. Just through you, Thank Mayor, you. and to Councillor Sorry, Ryland. excuse me, if I could just speak to you, Councillor Ryland. Um, as you know, on the, on the 7th of September, we're having a workshop on Ripley Valley and, and so on, and we've been doing some work with um, the Queensland Treasury Corp as well that's been undergoing since the beginning of this year. So, I mean, that, that'll be something that we'll be discussing. Yes, Councillor Yeah, uh, I also look forward to bringing and welcoming new people to our city, um, but I think that it needs to be done in a considered way. Um, we can't just say that we want, you know, thousands of lots that, that look a particular way to, to, get them, to get the maximum amount of people into the city. I think that we need to look to sustainable development, um, and that's something that this council has historically been bad at doing. The, the, the lack of biodiversity, the remnant vegetation that doesn't exist because of the way that the, that the city has grown. I think that, yes, we want to welcome um, as many people to the city, but in a really sustainable and well-considered way. So I wasn't necessarily saying that we need to pump the brakes and stop all development, rather that we take a considered position moving forward. Um, can I Thank you, Councillor that one? Yes, Councillor It's a PDA. The state government sets the most... Um, plans out at Ripley Valley. So it's not that council itself, and if developers put in applications and they meet all the boxes, council can't knock it back. So you're saying let's, let's try and stage it uh, in a way that would suit us. Well, I don't think planning can do that, but I'm always happy to be proved wrong, but it is a PDA area and we have not as much control as you, you may like. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Island. Thanks, Councillor Island. Thank you. If there's no other comment, I'll put the matter to the vote. Uh, item 15.3, I'll put that to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous and carried. I now call for an adjournment for 15 minutes. Um, it is, what, oh, sorry. Mayor, could we make that 20, please? 20 minutes, yeah, okay. It's 10.48, so I'll make it to um, 11.10. Um, I'll put that matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. And it's unanimous and carried. See you back at 11.10. Thank you.
Thank you. Welcome back to the Ordinary Council meeting of the 22nd of July. It's 11.10. And we're up to item 15.4, which is the Queensland Disaster Management Conference 2021. And I believe that uh, uh, it accords with the requirements of the representation of the city at official functions policy. Councillor Corns will be providing a verbal report outlining her learnings from her attendance at the Queensland Disaster Management Conference. The theme for 2021 was disaster management in the new COVID world. So I'll hold, hand over to, to you to provide that update. Councillor Kunzelman. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> the Queensland Disaster Management Conference 2021 was delivered by the Local Government Association of Queensland. The focus of the conference was about managing disasters in a changing world. It provided an opportunity for various organisations to come together and discuss the challenges of disaster management and review management practices. And, and those who came together are our key partners in, in disaster management. I attended relative to my positions as Deputy Chair of the Local Disaster Management Group and Chair of the Local Recovery Group. One of the key takeaways was uh, the story of climate change and the existence of more severe weather patterns, which is expected to be exacerbated. And that is um, one of the being demonstrated throughout the world right now. The burden of disasters is greater than the direct damage estimates. Disasters have a very long tail, are very individual, and cause a great burden to our residents and to council itself. Within the uh, fraternity of um, disaster, managers, disaster managers, there is a new emphasis on professionalism, including the promotion of the emergency manager role with a recognised set of skills, a defined level of knowledge and autonomy in practice. And the concept of certification moves disaster management from vocation to profession. And this is going to be increasingly important in uh, light of an increasing number of disasters that we can expect. The conference was useful for understanding disasters in the bigger context, emphasised the role of local government and also introduced person-centred person-centred emergency preparedness. Thank you. I just have a, a question. Yep, through the mayor. What if there was a pandemic here in Ipswich? Would you, would the disaster management um, group have a role in that? We, we would and we do, and we have. So what would be the role? Sorry? What would be the role? Well, the role is to, the role is to support the uh, health department, basically. Um, the legislation mandates a role for local government in disaster management in every case, and so that's what we would do. And that's what we've been doing, supporting yeah. local uh, the local health authority uh, in what they do with distribution of vaccines and so on. Under the Disaster Management Act, the, the, this, we are in a disaster. We're in a declared yes, disaster. Yeah. So we've been in a disaster since the council was formed. Um, I had, had my training actually before I even was sworn in because we have been in that state mm -hmm. of disaster. Um, this is probably unusual. Usually when there's a disaster like a flood, like you've experienced, it's usually led by council. Um, this one being a pandemic is being led by Queensland Health, so it's very different. So it's a top-down yeah. as opposed to a bottom-up approach. So it has been a very different way that disasters are managed. Yeah. So we have regular local disaster management group meetings uh, and district um, disaster management group meetings as well as um, regular teleconferences with, with the um, Premier and the Chief Health Officer when there's you know, a change and things are happening like that as well. They'll have teleconferences. If, if I may just say, we were addressed by Dr Jeanette Young and uh, she gave us an overview of the, uh, the response to the pandemic as well. Um, of course, there's no end to that story yet by any means. Well, I see that Queensland's closed its borders to New South Wales, so there may not be any more spread. Thank you. If there's no more discussion, I'll put that that report be noted. Those in favour, please raise your hand. That's unanimous and carried. We'll now move on to item 
one. It's a notice of motion from, from the Deputy Mayor. It's a rather lengthy one, so I'll hand over to you to, to, to read, out your, read out your notice of motion and, uh, and move it. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so my motion is that Council establish suitable local office spaces at Springfield Central, Red Bank Plains and Rosewood Libraries for use by councillors to meet with local residents, businesses and community organisations. These spaces will be available on a permanent basis to ensure councillors maintain a presence and are available in the community they represent to hear about local issues important to residents and to make it easier for community members to provide feedback on these issues and the performance of council. To improve access, availability and facilitation of meetings for residents with their elected reps and to provide increased confidentiality for residents and allow for improved security of personal information to guard against loss, unauthorised access or other forms of misuse. That council implement these spaces using existing infrastructure without additional commercial lease expenditure to council by the end of August 2021. That appropriate administrative support be made available at these locations as required, utilising existing resource allocations. And that section 9.5 of the council expenses reimbursement and administrative support policy be amended as follows, by removing paragraphs 9.52 and 9.53 and replace with shared office facilities located within council administration building will be provided for other councillors, dedicated multi-purpose office and meeting space will be provided at suitable council customer service centres and library facilities and access to dedicated councillor meeting rooms will be provided within the council administration building. In addition, access to dedicated multi-purpose office and meeting space will be available at councils, customer service centres and library facilities. So I bring this motion to council. Um, I'll just get oh, a can I have a second? Sorry, I'll second. Councillor, Councillor Fechner. Thank, thank you, you. Councillor Fechner. So I'll just I'll leave it up to you to speak on this briefly. I um, I bring this forward because uh, one of the number one queries that I do get from my um, community is where is your office? Where can I find you? Um, and when I um, do state that I'm working um, in Ipswich CBD and available on the road to meet with them. Um, they seem quite disheartened from my um, division, most, mostly because it is a fair distance for them to travel um, and then to book um, a time or a meeting with me is, is rather a formal process. Um, I would like to be more hands-on in my community um, and a lot of our ratepayers aren't um, used to like in uh, booking formal meetings as such um, and you know I, I get a lot of queries when I'm out and about and I would love to have um, a hub that is available to me at all times so that I could facilitate a meeting with them on more of an ad hoc uh, basis so that I can be with my community, uh, listening to them more um, to then deliver adequate strategy for my division in particular and other divisions as well that are, um, are further out from the Ipswich CBD. So I think it's vital that um, our connection uh, be more established in, in the outer um, regions of our city. We have a, quite a large land mass that we need to um, to be across and our divisions are, are quite large. Um, and so I think this will aid um, that facilitation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Johnny. Councillor Tully, do you wish to speak to us, the seconder? Councillor. Oh, sorry, sorry, my apologies. Councillor Fechner, would you like to speak to us, the... Yeah, I, uh, I speak in support of this motion, um, hence why I seconded um, Councillor Jonick's very thoughtful notice of motion, um, not costing uh, the organisation any more um, any more money, which is great. Um, making the councillors um, who aren't CBD uh, central more accessible to their residents um, is a wonderful initiative, and I support Councillor Jonick um, 
in supporting her community um, and thank her for bringing her residents' concerns uh, to this table and having such a great solution, um, you know, and, and a good outcome for um, for the for her division and for those um, who live more remotely and want to drop in on a councillor rather than organising um, a meeting and, and trying to um, navigate all of our diary clashes and the calendar engineering that has to go into that. Uh, it can be quite confronting to ring up to find some time in a councillor's diary and you know book in an appointment. Um, the opportunity to drop in uh, for <clears throat> councillors is really important and I think that's great. Thank you. Yes, Council Madsen. I'm more than happy to speak in support of this motion this morning. Um, recently been looking at some stats with uh, Councillor Island about the Great Division 1. 55.8% um, of the city's area is in our division. Um, that includes, you know, pretty important communities at Red Bank Plains, equally at Grandchester and Mount Maud and everything in between. Um, Particularly the, um, I'm sure you may have been caught in the traffic yesterday out to Red Bank Plains, Mayor, um, with the still awaited works to be completed on the Cunningham Highway overpass on Red Bank Plains Road. Um, without that connection there, if, if I come in here every morning, it, depending on the time that you leave, it can take you 30 to 50, any time between 30 to 50 minutes to get out to Red Bank Plains. It's an equal journey out towards Rosewood and if you go to Mount Mort, well, that's a, another 10, 20 minutes on that. Um, so that's the journey that residents have to take to come and see their councillor. Like, take it on the flip side. Um, I don't think that's okay. I think decision makers in our city should be available to the people and with a degree of convenience. Um, with regards to how it is like people are out there trying to survive they're working like they don't like if you work you, you can't get in here if you, you work in Brisbane or anything like that you need other options available to see your counsellor um, and indeed some of the elderly populations aren't comfortable with driving that long to to get a meeting and in regards to just good local representation, if we're able to, you know, block out a day or two where we're physically embedded in Red Bank Plains, um, we also get all those little intangibles that we're currently robbed of. Um, you, you run into people when you pop out to get a coffee or a pie or whatever. You run into people and they say one or two things. I feel as somebody in Division 1, the amount of time that I'm drawn towards this building here in the CBD... I'm robbed of some of that context that you just get on the street talking to people. And um, I'm, I'm much more keen to spend as much time as possible in my division because um, I represent the area and I'm very passionate about it. <laughs> I want my focus to be able to be there. And um, I commend Councillor Jonick for this motion that she's brought today. Thank you. Councillor Doyle. Um, thank you, Mayor. I just want to make um, a short comment um, just in support um, of Councillor Jonick's notice of motion. Uh, Councillor Fechner and I, uh, Division 3, we too represent suburbs, uh, eastern um, suburbs. Um, you know, three to four times a week we're travelling down to Collingwood Park and, and Red Bank and attending um, appointments at residents' homes um, and that's either during the day or into the evening. Um, we see this as an opportunity to perhaps take those meetings to an official council office should, should the desire be there of, of the resident um, to not meet at their home. Um, and, you know, any opportunity um, to connect better with our community in this very complex digital world um, that, that we're in, it's just another opportunity and, you know, as we've all um, spoken to, at, at no additional cost. So I think it's a great idea. Thank you, Councillor Tull. Councillor Tully? Yeah, thanks, Mayor. I'm, I'm supportive of uh, this motion. Um, the previous divisional officers, the elected officers, were, the, in my view, the heart and soul of the community, uh, well regarded, respected and used by uh, people in our communities of all age ranges, people who co could come and see councillors um, in close proximity um, to where they live. 
Um, it is, as Councillor Jonick said, a very common, in my case, the most frequently asked question that I get on anything. It's not the council budget, it's not rates and charges, it's simply um, where is your office? And most people, even now, don't even realise that the offices um, had been closed um, in 2018. Um, if you look at the logistics of this, if you're a person living at uh, Springfield Lakes, it's a 42 kilometre round trip by vehicle in, into Ipswich uh, to see a councillor, which I think is unreasonable. That's actually more than uh, someone at Rosewood where it's a 40 kilometre round trip into Ipswich. If you have a vehicle, if you don't, if you lived at Springfield Lakes, you'd have to get a bus, if it's available, to the Springfield Central Railway Station, from there to um, the uh, a train to the Darra Station, and then a, um, another train into Ipswich. And that's an impost which I think is un unreasonable. Um, close to half of the city, half of the people in our city reside in the eastern suburbs. This will be significant, certainly, for us, but this motion goes beyond Division 2. Um, it incorporates, uh, of course, Divisions uh, 1 um, and uh, 4 in particular, but I think the opportunity is there. There are council premises, I think, at Riverview, a, a, a library at um, uh, Red Bank Plaza. I think it's a dynamic uh, solution to, to an issue that the community is extremely keen you know, to see their councillors back in the community um, rather than necessarily in here, and I strongly support this motion. Sorry, thank you, Councillor Tully. Any other discussion? Uh, Mayor, yes, I, I'd also like to speak in support of the uh, notice of motion. Um, division 4 is uh, also geographically large, not quite as large as Division 1, but uh, we still have a uh, uh, dispersed population uh, with uh, different centres. Of course, in the, out, towards, uh, out in the west, Rosewood is, the, um, is town for uh, places like Hagsley and um, other surrounds, uh, Marburg uh, residents often just cross the hill to run into Rosewood. Um, of course, uh, utilising uh, Rosewood Library, uh, Division 4 councillors would uh, be more than happy to have Division 1 uh, councillors uh, maybe pop in there occasionally for your uh, close by residents from uh, as close as Ebenezer. Uh, the only, uh, for Division 4, the only downside I see is that um, North of the highway, uh, Carolee only has a library pod, so that might be a bit difficult in the heat of summer. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But uh, in, in, in general, uh, Mayor, I uh, would like to uh, express my support. And I, I do know that uh, Division 4 residents uh, in the um, rural areas in particular uh, would very much appreciate being able to um, know that they're local divisional councillor on a particular day uh, is resident in office at the Rosewood Library and that allows them to uh, call in easily. For my Division 4 residents in uh, Brassel and North Ipswich, well, there's still the um, uh, main administration building here. Thank you, Councillor Milligan. Any other? Oh, thank you, Mayor. Just one final comment, and um, obviously we're we're all you know appear to be very supportive of this notice of motion. We certainly don't want to discourage our residents from attending the beautiful administration building here. Noting we have um, large meeting rooms on level one that are very private, and the meetings I've um, attended with residents in those rooms, they're um, really, really um, impressed and excited by the new facilities we've got here. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Councillor I guess from my perspective, I see that all of us put our hand up um, to, to run as councillors because we want to represent our community and we want to help our community. And so we're always looking at ways that we can do that. And we, we came in, um, obviously, just as COVID was taking grip of our community. And so how we you know, interact with residents has been very stymied. It's, it's not the same doing a Zoom call or a, you know, a phone call. It's been quite challenging for, for residents and, and, and also for us and as, a, as a community. I, do just, I, just, I will be supporting this motion. I just point out the fact that by not having the, the 10 
um, electoral offices, that has saved us $8 million over a four-year term. And that has meant that we can do things like fund rural roads, you know, a, a new curb and channelling program and, and things like that. So I think it's very important to see that. And, and no other South East Queensland council apart from Brisbane has um, electoral offices for individual divisions. I think this is a great compromise. I think having um, the, the libraries is, I think, a, is a really good way to, to address how do we how are we, how we able to reach out to the community more within, within costs. I also note too that when you look at, um, I think following Council Madsen's lead on looking at the facts and figures, back in 2016 when the election was on, um, each of the councillors represented 16,000 residents uh, with ha having 10 divisions. Now that there's four divisions, each of the divisions have about 57,000 people, so that's three times the number of people. And yes, there are two councillors, but I can tell you now, every single community group, sporting group, when we go to, go to visit, they do expect to see both their councillors. So I, I do commend the hard work of, the, of this council that they are servicing three times the number of residents and with fewer uh, um, council support staff as well. So I do commend them and love the fact that you're wanting to get out there and wanting to spend more time um, with residents. Um, and I think also looking at the fact that we, you've been very active in the community matters and those pop-up mobile offices around the place, which I think is fantastic. So I think this is a, a great idea. I guess I just look at, I don't know what the costs will be and, um, and if it will have an impact to the, the amenity and libraries, I guess we'll find that out. But yeah, I'll be supporting this motion as well. I think, see you. If I may, Chair, just noting the, the comments that were made uh, that it uh, bringing no cost if this motion were to be resolved, I feel an obligation to to raise from a governance perspective that based on the information I have, it, it would not be possible without cost. So I would, I guess, foreshadow that I would feel an obligation to bring a report back to you on the implications of the decision at the earliest opportunity. Just a clarification, the motion doesn't refer to no cost, does it? Yes, it does. What whereabouts? Uh, C was utilising existing resource allocations. Yeah, but that, that doesn't yeah, that doesn't say it no cost. Um, and B the, um, without additional commercial lease expenditure. Why would that be? Mayor, if I may through you as chair, I was referring to the comments that were made by the councillors speaking in support. Hmm. where Councillor Fechner, I think, has at least one um, yeah. mentioned that they supported on the basis that there was no cost. Yeah. Um, um, through Council. you, um, Mayor, um, <clears throat> I, I think um, I may have been guilty of the comment around um, no cost and, and perhaps that was too broad of a, a generalisation. Um, obviously, you'll need to prepare a report on this and, and investigate what additional support will be required within those existing um, centres and obviously there, there may be a cost around that. Could I just also ask, um, I'm, I'm assuming a point of difference in this to the way the old divisional offices ran, that official council business, um, for example, paying a rate bill or you know, inquiring around dog registration can occur at these new spaces, as Councillor Tully said. It's a it's a, a dynamic solution. So I'm just keen to understand um, that that those things can occur. I think well, it's important. Yeah, that, the, the Council yeah. Connect is set up in those libraries, yeah. so you can pay your rates or you know, perfect. Thank I think you. Practically anything except for lodging, DA. I think nearly, but most services. Yeah, yeah Council Madsen. I do not believe the people of Red Bank Plains have the convenience of a council connect yet. Correct. Yeah, they don't. Council we might Fitman? be able to defer the question, but um, I do retract my statement, no cost, um, but, potential, but, but I think that it will be a low cost solution uh, for the organisation um, <clears throat> to implement. Um, but yeah, we, I, I also um, query the, the ability for Red Bank Plains um, constituents to pay their rates at the Red Bank Plains Library. Mm. I was under the impression that that was available at Rosewood and Springfield, yes. um, but not necessarily at Red Bank Plains. Yep. And I think to Red Bank Plains is just the one meeting room, is that correct, Council Manson? So, and that's, that's yeah. Yep. I just note that the recommendation says that they're without any additional commercial lease expenditure and utilising existing resource allocations. So it's my understanding from this motion that it's to be at no additional cost, but I'll, I'll refer to the mover to her. 
So by uh, utilising existing resource allocations to councillors um, in the form of um, office expenditure um, and, and stationery, I guess, um, which was uh, the purpose of that, um, that recommendation. Mm -hmm. Uh, and also just pointing out that the uh, kind of infrastructure charges that might have been um, $8 million in the past um, are, are non-existent here because the, the premises are um, already under our control, basically. Um, so... So I guess if I could just clarify, um, is it your expectation that there be no additional costs... With this no additional costs um, to council capitally or in capital or operating. Um, I, I I don't have privy of any asset register that lets me know what type of um, petitions might be available to section off certain um, uh, office space in these uh, facilities. But I would leave that to um, the organisation and the, the CEO to. Um, Organise and arrange. Okay. I think, I think Councillor Madsen was waiting no. next. Cool. So. Uh, I just wanted to say, like, one key variance. I mean, perhaps we were just taking a bit of poetic licence because it effectively is no cost compared to the older model. Um, and one key um, important thing of that is there's no um, there's no leases being undertaken. There's there's no risk in that regard. There's no long term commitments that are being made to any site that we would have to pay out. Um, should we want to exit that lease? Um, there, was a, there was a quirk in um, former financial statements where because Councillor Ireland's divisional boundaries moved a lot over yes. her career, yes. um, they had to move her office routinely to actually be in her area. Mm -hmm. So her councillor expenses looked a bit higher because they were putting the office fit out on that. And um, I, I found that quite interesting to read because it gave you an idea of how different those leases cost across the city. Mm. In, and it, it makes sense. Like, it, that's how commercial real estate works. But um, we're not open to any ongoing program of works to provide that amenity. Um, it's mm. existing council locations. There's mm. no ongoing fit-out and cancelling leases and so forth. It's, from a risk perspective, I think it's pretty solid. Thank you, Councillor. So I think Councillor Tully wanted to say something. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mayor. Um, the motion speaks for itself, and uh, I guess it's trite to say that um, other comments that have been made around the table, you know, in a, in a general sort of sense, uh, don't, don't form necessarily part of the uh, proposed motion. But uh, paragraph B is clear that it's talking about um, uh, any um, additional commercial lease expenditure, uh, and um, that specifically refers to that. And paragraph C is the only part of the motion that I can understand also talks about um, uh, potential costs um, utilising the administrative support based on the existing resource allocations. Mm. It, it, it doesn't say there would be absolutely no costs like $1 or, or other amounts for signage and um, you know, other ongoing costs there. And I, I think you know, as the administration will look to the implementation of this, um, I, I feel that um, obviously shouldn't be reading into it more than perhaps what people said, that there'd be no cost, because there's obviously got to be some cost, people moving, um, you know, tables, chairs and things like that. But the, the critical issue is that there'd be no um, additional lease expenditure and uh, no additional staff to the council, which I think is very significant. I understand that. I guess I'm being the devil's advocate here. From a good governance perspective, we're looking at something that's a substantial change and we don't have any costings. So that's, that's probably my concern that I have here while I'm having the discussion about what are, what's people's expectation of, of costings for the organisation to implement. We're asking them to do something where we have no costings, which, again, doesn't follow good governance principles. So, I'm, like I said, I'm supportive of, of this motion, but I think we also have to have reported back to us on the cost of this as well. Okay. Councillor Milligan. Mayor, yes, I... I did identify myself that there may be small ancillary costs, um, as uh, Councillor Tully alluded to in uh, item C of the notice of motion, that uh, with appropriate administrative support, uh, would our council liaison officers or research officers, um, this being their usual um, place of work, mm. would they attend here first and then book out a fleet vehicle to 
attend out there if we needed them on site. I don't know. That would be something that would probably uh, be possibly discussed within the acting CEO's report. Um, other things such as signage, we would have to probably uh, check whether within governance um, we could have mm -hmm. um, physical signage at those library sites to say that divisional councillors are there, whether we're allowed to have our names on there or not, um, whether that's appropriate. Mm. Um, it's just yep. those those small matters like that, but I'm um, absolutely confident that the acting CEO would uh, cover all that within uh, yep. the report provided. Councillor Fickner? Yeah, and just speaking in support of Councillor Madsen's comments about <clears throat> risk position being low, um, and us all being in support of Councillor Jonick's motion. Um, we're still in the exploration phase of this, I guess, and the order of costs um, could increase or decrease operationally depending on what options are presented to us moving forward. So mm -hmm. I look forward to seeing yep. how the organisation um, responds to this um, to get the best possible outcome um, at <clears throat> a reasonable price for the ratepayer. And again, I retract my statement of no cost. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Acting CEO. <laughs> Thank you. I think we've all had a discussion, so I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Thank you very much. It's unanimous and, and passed. Um, I guess we'll look forward to the report back from you, uh, Acting CEO, on, on this. So thank you. Uh, item 17 is questions on notice. There are none. Uh, so I will close the meeting. It is 11.42, and thank you very much. <laughs>